Let's take a look at the new Micro Galaxy Squadron Millennium Falcon Vehicle by Jazzwares, launch edition. Villa Veracino, living the Star Wars life. Hello there and welcome to the Villa Veracino YouTube channel. So today I have what is a very exciting unboxing for you all. This is the Jazzwares Micro Galaxy Squadron Millennium Falcon Vehicle. This range, the Micro Galaxy Squadron range, just showed up in New Zealand. We're very, very excited when we saw it sort of fully revealed at Star Wars Celebration. We were very excited by the idea of having a Starship range that's all in scale, so down from very small speeder bikes up to large vehicles like the Millennium Falcon here, so very, very excited. This one includes motion-activated lights and sounds, as far as we are aware. This is the only vehicle in the line that has an electronic feature, so that's very cool. Adds a little bit of something. Obviously, a large vehicle like that can fit batteries in that a little bit better than tiny little speeder bikes and things like that. This is the launch edition. As far as we're aware, there isn't a chase version of this vehicle. I would expect perhaps down the line we might get, say, a solo Lando Calrissian version that's got the different paint jobs and stuff like that, but at this point this is the only version. This is an original trilogy edition version of the Millennium Falcon. As we can see, it comes with Han Solo, Princess Leia, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Chewbacca, and it has the round radar dish there. So very, very exciting. We'll take a quick look at the packaging before we get stuck in and open it. As with the other vehicles in the line, this has a shiny gold launch edition sticker. All of the packaging that we have seen locally in New Zealand includes the sticker. Don't know if that's just relating to series one, um, which is obviously this first launch, whether we will see this restocked later without that sticker, or basically everything in series one is going to have the sticker. But yeah, it's just something interesting to note. I guess we'll find out in <laughs> in a year or two um, how common the sticker will be. This is an electronic vehicle of course. It notes here on the front that it requires three AAA batteries that are not included. So if you just want this for display you don't really need to fuss with the batteries. I know I'm always wary of leaving batteries inside Star Wars collectibles in case they leak or sort of uh, corrode the electronics in them but the option is there. Uh, we're going to take a look at that once I get it all open just to show you guys what it goes and does. So we've got some beautiful Millennium Falcon artwork here on the side. Taking a look at the back, it seems to have a good variety of features depicted here. As with the other smaller vehicles, we also have a collectible blueprint which you can cut out and keep if you wish to. This is vehicle number 22 in the range. The Millennium Falcon is from the Assault class, the larger ships. We can see some of here the other vehicles and the other classes. We have the Light Armor class, which includes TIE Fighter, Asajj Ventress's ship, the ATST Starfighter class, which includes the Jedi Starfighter, X Wing, and TIE Fighter, Transport class, the Imperial Troop Transport, and the Starship class, which has got the Razor Crest and the Slave One. So, great variety of here. They generally don't include pictures of the small uh, speeder bike range, the little Scout class, which comes in mystery boxes on the back here. Um, but uh, you can see this great, fantastic range. Good variety here. We've got some of the modern vehicles, going back to some classics, some sort of prequel era ones here with the Clone Wars vehicles. So, really neat. So, looking at the features here, we can see that this vehicle uh, actually has an opening component which the top section is going to come off and we can see inside that's very fun especially since it includes some figures it looks like the cockpit can open and it gives us here a little bit of a teaser about what the motion activation will do it looks like there are some buttons for lights and sounds and some motion activation uh, lights and sounds which is very cool looks like we've got some landing gear that will pop down here as well so I'm assuming that's just going to be sort of simple pull down pegs. Um, on the other side, it says motion activated, lights and sounds. It's basically showing that we can tip this thing backwards and forwards up to the side to sort of activate some of these features. Very keen to see what that is like. Um, I think this is a good size to put lights and sounds in it. I know obviously the classic Hasbro Millennium Falcons often have signs, but they are quite large. You know, you, you know the average sort of seven-year-old's not really flying that thing around the house. This one, almost, it's a very big hamburger, but it looks like 
like. Uh, children can hold that two hands very easily or a, an adult can hold that with one hand depending on the weight. Um, it doesn't feel too heavy especially since once we take all the packaging out but very keen to see uh, at this price point in New Zealand it retails for a hundred dollars. That's going to be a little on the higher side for children's toys but we've certainly seen much more expensive ones. The sort of one with the Nerf gun sort of aspect to it that came out for The Force Awakens was much more expensive than that and much bigger so I think this is logistically better for kids to play with if of course they are older than eight years old as noted on the box because of the small components that can be removed in the small figures. But great if you've got a Star Wars fan in the family that wants a Millennium Falcon to play with and obviously great for collectors. This is a pretty good shape and size to put on a shelf. It's not too big but if you're a Star Wars fan and you want some classic vehicles I think this is going to be a really really popular choice. So now we've taken a good look at the packaging. We've got just a little bit of a cutout window here in the top. A little bit of some of that artwork coming around the corner there view very keen to get stuck in and open it nothing too interesting on the bottom there obviously if you're going to keep these boxed they look pretty cool sitting like this on your shelf you, you know it's not blind um, you can keep these boxed if you want but because of the addition of the blind boxes in the series we really do want to have these all open and displayed and obviously we want to open and review it for you guys we want to display all of ours loose all together so without further ado let's get stuck in and open it up okay so I've just snipped the sellotape tape across the top now we're just gonna slide this big beast on out So it looks like this box also includes some cool sort of background art, this big piece of cardboard here. So we couldn't really see it inside the box, but that is really quite cool. There's a cardboard insert that I guess you can cut out and put on the wall or on your bookshelf if you really want to create a backdrop for your display. We've got a pretty sort of uh, cool uh, sort of starfighter battle here. We've got predominantly X-Wings and TIE Fighters. I don't actually see the Millennium Falcon in the art, which is kind of fun. Uh, we've got what seems to be sort of a uh, ship getting blown up here. I would assume maybe a Star Destroyer. We've got one here um, in the upper corner. But yeah, predominantly original trilogy starships here. Classic st uh, sort of TIE Fighters and X-Wings with a fun battle there. So yeah, that's really quite cool, isn't that? I think the packaging's neat, uh, particularly this original backing art. So I'm going to keep that, definitely. But I'm just going to pop that out of the way for now so we can have a look at the vehicle properly. Okay, so we've taken the big plastic inner out of the box. Now it's time to take this big vehicle out of the plastic um, and get these small accessories out as well. So get the little figures out. Aren't they cute? I'm just going to pop them off to one side. So we'll get stuck into the vehicle itself first. Sorry, this is going to be a little bit noisy. And just going to keep this on. There's like a big rubber band that I think is to stop this from popping out. quite solidly in there. Okay, let's see if I can get these out first. Okay, that went flying. Okay, those actually came out easier than I thought. Um, let's just see, I'm not sure. This is going to take a bit of wrangling to get it out. It is solidly in here. That was actually kind of tricky to get out. Um, it's obviously pretty solidly in there. Sometimes I wish that they just have some of those um, sort of cardboard paper ties to twist these things in place. But I understand if you are the sort of person that likes to keep these things in their box, then using clear plastic packaging is the most sort of aesthetic to have it well displayed in there. But that is quite a job. You've really got to sort of push in these knob bits that are sort of holding it in place. 
um, and it's always a bit of a risk. I mean, if you don't care about the packaging, you can just sort of cut this up and get it out. But I personally wanted to be able to put this back in the box. So, oof, that was a bit of a job. Okay, so now that it's out, let's get that out of the way. Now we can take a closer look at the falcon itself. So there's just a little sort of a rubber band here that I'm just going to cut. It's clearly uh, to stop this from moving too much while it's sort of upright in the box. Then we can have a look at all the play features. So just get that off. There we go. Okay, so now we get our full proper look at the Millennium Falcon and the paint job and the weathering. So we can see we've got this sort of the uh, sort of dirty trail lines here. Two of these uh, panels here are form buttons for the electronic features uh, that we'll have a look at once we get some batteries in. So this ship, like most of the others in the line, has a light sort of wash over it, which is a little bit irregular depending on which vehicle you get obviously because it'll be hand done so you can see in some areas it is sort of a little darker in tone than others and if you get the chance to see this on a store shelf you'll be able to see a little bit of variation ship to ship so you can find one that you like the look of obviously it's a little hard to see the whole thing when it's packaged in a box this one has a little bit of sort of rubbing here where uh, the weathering has sort of been um, wiped a little bit when it was still wet um, but it's not too bad I, I did see one there was a couple on the shelf when we saw this one and the other one was just a little bit heavier in places and I think that tends to look a little bit more uh, heavy-handed and not quite as pretty I thought this one was the better one of what we saw on the shelf so I am happy with the with the overall uh, weathering and paint job on this I know some fans like to sort of take their own airbrush skills their sort of model uh, kit sets to um to sort of accenting these on their own time or just sort of uh, taking off some of the wash um, but we prefer not to sort of mess with it to us they're sort of collectibles as intended straight from the box so let's have a look at some of the features so we've got the little sort of quad cannon which is supposed to be inserted in the top here i don't know this looks like a round peg so I guess it's not going to matter too much about which way it's facing. So there we have that there and we can sort of pivot that around based on whichever way you want to sort of have that displayed. That's quite cute. And so now that that's on we can rotate and pull this section out because now we've got like a little lever that we can grip onto. So this if we look through sort of in here we can see the little sort of seat with controls um, where you can put a figure so that they can be sort of controlling the guns um, and sort of an action playset feature. And that is just sort of hollow through there. We can see that there is a tunnel that's going to go through to other parts of the Falcon, but I think that that's kind of fun. So we also have the original trilogy era round radar dish. The detail on this is really nice. Sorry, I'll just see if I can get the camera to pick up on that a little bit better. Some really neat detail there. Simple round peg to attach that on to this part here. So there. It's got a little bit of maneuverability. You can pivot around a little bit once that and sports that's in place. So that looks good however you want that angled and let's have a look here we can open up the cockpit it's got four seats sculpted in there there are four figures so each of those four can fit in here um, weathering on in here as well we've got a clear plastic window so when those figures are inside we'll be able to see them there but uh, let's take a look at the underside quickly so we've got some sort of panels here we can see that the sort of lower quad cannon here is sculpted on that doesn't move it doesn't come off so that's not going to get lost or knocked when it's on the underside sitting on your shelf oops now that i've taken that bit 
um, out that's gonna I guess that's why that elastic band was there so that doesn't fall out I'm just gonna leave that to one side so we've got feet that just kind of swing out you can see there this side does the same and then we've got one up here at the top so we've got five feet which create the landing uh, sort of platform there so we can display it on on a desk which looks pretty good keeps it nicely well off so we can have figures standing next to it or vehicles standing next to it and it looks appropriately off the ground there so I'm just going to leave those feet out for a bit let's have a look at this panel see how this comes off okay so the back portion comes up and we're just going to see how hard this is to sort of get off just I can feel it okay there we go and let's see how much of this is oh looks like a big chunk of it is okay wow okay that's a fairly large section that all comes off nicely there we can see the underside of the uh, sort of electronic buttons here these two are buttons they obviously connect to these so that you've still got the buttons to control lights and sounds when you've got it open as a playset that's kind of fun we can see some of the inner workings here for the uh the lights here at the back and we've got some really neat sort of play scenes here we've got a little section here this part comes out let's see how well that lifts out so we can hide some characters or <laughs> secret notes or something here in the sort of secret smuggler compartment that's kind of fun that clips in nicely we've got a room here we've got the landing bay don't know if this comes down it looks like it should come down uh, I'll check that in a minute and then I've got the chest table the dejaric table here that's it almost looks metal um it's certainly painted to look metal that's really quite neat you can see it's quite a different silver tone to the rest of it it's hard to looks glued in I think they've just painted it to look quite metallic which is quite nice there and then of course we've got the central compartment that you can kind of see that there's a little uh sort of tunnel there so if I put that back in turning it around seems to sort of lock it in place so that so if you you can just make out the tunnel is sort of lined up here if I pivot around it sort of closes up um, so you can imagine the little characters going in there and then that won't sort of fall out I'm just going to have a quick little look to see if this ramp I think it is designed to open I'm just not sure how the uh how the latches work on that one okay so there is the ramp here it's a little bit stiff but if you just Get your fingernail hooked in there you can pull it down and we can see we've got the sort of the struts that hold the ramp down that looks really quite nice so you could put the figures there if you've got the falcon landed on display you can have figures standing in front of the ramp like they're going to go up to the falcon and that just uh, closes back up with a couple of snaps it's very sturdy it's not going to suddenly sort of drop out on its own uh, and then it closes up there so that's about it for the internals I like that it's got the same weathering as the uh, as the rest of the exterior so it looks all very sort of not like a stark cleanness we know the Falcon is supposed to be sort of grubby and lived in I'm liking that so we can see there is a screw here for a battery compartment I think it's kind of fun that it's hidden here not on the underside keeps it all very in world you've got to open the whole thing up to actually access the batteries so you haven't got sort of the big shiny screws visible on the exterior of the ship so I guess next thing to do is to get that open pop in the AAA batteries that it didn't come with but I've got some on hand and uh, then we'll have a play with the lights and sounds very excited to see how this all goes together okay so I've got the batteries loaded in here I've used the screwdriver to put it all back together you guys don't need to see that so this ship actually comes with a full instruction manual sheet um, not many of the other ships do this so this one has got electronics so there's a sort of you know the technical things that it shows how to get the batteries in 
the orientation. It shows nice clear instructions on removing the batteries and getting into that compartment. I like that this instruction includes uh, text. A lot of the toy instructions generally just kind of pictures with gestures and things like that, so you can't really sort of figure it out um, very well. You're sort of fussing around with it. So it says, you know, reinstall the cover. So on the back, we've actually got a fairly lengthy um, description here of all the different buttons and the features and things like that, which is really fun to see. So it says to activate, press button one and hold for one second. The startup sound will play when the Millennium Falcon is turned on, engine lights will turn on too. And then pressing button one for hyperspace sounds, there's a hold and play continuous loop. Button two, cannon turret sound, hold for continuous loop. And then we have a bunch of basically movement activated uh, sounds like tipping it up and down, side to side, flip it over to play the upside down sound and uh, trigger the Millennium Falcon lights through motion. You basically rock the Millennium Falcon from left to right. So this really does indicate that it's really designed with kids in mind, you know, flying it around the living room and that, and that's really quite neat to see. Nice clear instructions on the different sounds and how to activate them. It says, after 30 seconds, if buttons are not pressed or the accelerometer is not triggered, sleep mode is activated. So it'll basically power down. It tells us how to get into the smuggler floor removal panel, which we saw. Additional play features, putting the figures in the cockpit, the turret, uh, locking that sort of clear top portion. The quad cannon turret is locked in position, and it shows you that you can sort of take it out, put the figure in, and uh, move the turret around, so that's fun. Um, doesn't doesn't actually mention the landing feet or the ramp here, um, but that's kind of obvious. These ones are a little bit more sort of, you know, making sure that uh, customers know exactly what they're getting. So that's really quite fun. It's got the battery sa safety information and stuff like that, the usual kind of stuff. So really useful. So let's get started and press button one. Okay, that was fun. That turns on quite nicely. So just going to play around. Okay, that's a really good one. Okay, so that's just classic turret noise for as bas basically as long as you want. Okay, so that makes quite predictable sounds, which is really quite fun to see. So I'm just going to fold these feet up at the bottom so I can hold that a little bit better. That's quite nice that they're quite predictable. And pushing that button turns it off. So it's nice and silent so that I can put this top panel on and we can see that all together. Let's see how easily this will snap back into place. Okay, nice there. Okay, so we've got the got the turret, so we can turn it on here now with these external buttons. Okay, it's not showing up quite as well on camera because I've got the lights showing on it, but this is really quite bright blue in person. It's definitely stronger in person than it might appear on camera because I've got these lights here kind of in the way. But yeah, so that just sort of... It's a fun startup sound and it looks like it's pretty much an on off, but if I hold it, it makes sort of classic hyperspace sounds. Very, very cool. Okay, I think that's, <laughs> it's gonna be one of those toys that's constantly making noise while I'm holding it. Wow, okay. I have to say the volume is impressive. I don't I don't even know whether I think that the sound is just coming out the back. It's really quite loud as I'm holding it. It's quite impressive that they've managed to get It's 
See if I just turn it off so I can talk for a minute. Um, it's quite impressive that they've got that much kind of interactivity built into what is essentially this component of the ship for the electronics. The batteries are here and then it seems like most of the sounds and the lights are all centered on the back here. But that is an incredible amount of sound you know, all just the classic ones that you need, spaceship flying, shooting, you know, the sort of the hyperdrive coming online. The lights are lovely and bright, a really quite consistent lighting around the outside, lovely blue color. Um, that is a really cool feature, uh, you know, most of our collectibles, they're not getting played with in the living room, uh, but this is the sort of thing that just brings out the inner kid. I suddenly want to go flying this round, <laughs> you know, you don't even need to make the zooming noises with your mouth. This thing is doing them all pretty well for you. So, oh, that's just making me feel like a big kid playing with that. Uh, it's got, got good sort of holdability. It's got you know, a good size to hold in your hands, even as an adult. And I can imagine that just being the coolest thing ever if you were a kid. And it's <laughs> pretty cool for the Star Wars fan. Um, oh, okay, so let's just take a look at the little figures. So we've got the little plastic packaging here. We've got the names down the side in case you're giving this to kids who are maybe, you know, learning who these characters are for the first time. Um, so let's get them out and have a look. So the paint job on these looks pretty good. Like the other figures in the line, there's going to be a little bit of hit and miss. I can see just a tiny little bit of scratching on Obi-Wan, but the figures are so small, you can't really nitpick the paint job. Leia's got just that sort of little touch at her belt and her face. Han Solo looks good. And Chewbacca, well, he's pretty much cast in brown with just maybe eyes and his bandolier, I think, is a slightly different brown. So... They all pivot at the waist. It looks like Obi-Wan and Leia basically have a skirt bottom, so they don't have articulation there. Um, and none of them have articulated heads, so you don't have accidents and ends up with uh, headless figures. They just have um, sort of a shoulder system where it looks like their arms are mounted together through the shoulders so their arms can lift and they uh, sort of pivot at the waist, uh, bend at the waist. So I'll just pop them out, get them out. Okay, so these are going to be very small. I'll see how well I can get the camera to focus on them. We've got Han Solo there, painted all the way around. He's got his little uh, holster with his blaster at his side there. Um, he doesn't have red stripes on his legs. I would assume that that's possibly just a little bit too much detail to put on a figure of the scale. We've got Princess Leia, plain white, with a silver belt and paint for her hands and her face. Then Obi-Wan, possibly one of the more detailed ones there. We've got silver lightsaber on his belt, uh, his gray hair. He's even got, I think that's just a texture on his skirt at the back there. I don't think that's a paint detail that I'm seeing there. Um, but yeah, he's got his tunic there, white beard and hair, and Chewbacca. You know, he's got his pretty pretty good sculpting for the sort of hairy appearance. And he's got just a simple brown touch there for his bandolier um, and eyes there. So, so you can see their arms pretty much always come up together. And then they bend at the hips. So you can sit them in a cockpit because this is a vehicle line. Um, so let's get Han and Chewbacca into sort of seating position and put them in the cockpit. There we go. I like that this is a hinged cockpit. You're not gonna lose that. So we get, let's see how easy this is to get them in here. Okay, we've got Chewbacca and Han Solo. Isn't that cute? They sit in there really well. I don't, you can't see, if you can see the detail there. They sit in there really quite well. The hands look like they're reaching for the controllers. If you spend a little bit more time, you can probably get them so they're fully touching. Um, but yeah, and then if we close the cockpit, we can see just, you can just kind of make out the characters on the inside. Um, but that's a really quite a neat little display feature. And I'll see if I can put Obi-Wan and Leia in there as well. Now, of course, they don't have independent legs. So let's see, some of the figures in this range I've found 
Okay, layer is one of the ones that are quite stiff at the hinges. They're not they're not loose because um, I don't know what would happen if they come apart. I don't know how easily these sorts of figures are to fix if you accidentally um break that join. Okay, so both of these were quite stiff. Okay, and I'm just going to get them. See if I can get them in here. Okay. Here we go, they sit in there quite nicely. So I've got all four characters sitting in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, all nicely and tidily in there. And of course these scale of figures means that you can put them in the uh, in the main body of the ship. We'll have a look at that in more detail with some figures uh, and some photos later. Um, but I think that is really quite cute, you know, a good nice secure place to keep your little figures so you can put your Millennium Falcon on your display shelf or your bookshelf or wherever you want to put it. I think that is a fabulous toy in New Zealand. It retails for $100. I think you're getting a ton of play value and just all good stuff for that price point compared to uh, what I'm afraid to say what some of the Hasbro Black Series figures are retailing for in New Zealand. I think this is a tremendous value for money uh, compared to action figures uh, at local prices these days. This is this is a ton of detail, a ton of plastic um, for what is about, the, uh, well, two Black Series figures is about the price of this these days. Um, so that's really, really cool. I hope you guys are as enthused about this as I am, because I think this is really, really cool. Obviously, the Millennium Falcon is such an iconic Star Wars ship, but it tends to be very expensive, very big, very heavy, um, done in any kind of, you know, unless you want tiny micro machines and things like that, which doesn't really convey how cool this ship is. This is a really good, really good scale, and I think that that is just so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing. I had a ton of fun doing this unboxing. Um, and now I've got to go find a really cool place on my shelf to put this, but I'm probably going to take it for a fly around the living room before I do that. So thank you so much for watching and may the force be with you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, check out our other videos, and subscribe for alerts about new uploads. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.